Kalika Sanskrit Vidyapit to kindly come on the stage and have a few words. Vina Pustakadharini Mavayadam Jadendakara Paham Haste Spatika Malikam Bidaratim Padamashane Sastitam वंदे ताम परमेश्वरी भगवती बुद्धि प्रणाम सारा वंदे ताम परमेश्वरी भगवती बुद्धि प्रणाम सारा समादरणीय इस अंतर्राष्ट्रीय गोष्ठी का अध्यक्ष जो प्रमुख अतिथि जो राष्ट्रीय अंतर्राष्ट्रीय रूप में उपस्थित भैया संपूर्ण अतिथि महाजन महानुभावर सहभागी मित्र आज गैणाकोट में रहे ऑक्सफोर्ड कलेज ने यह एटा अंतराष्ट्रीय संगोष्ठी कर हमी सरस्वती का समुपासक सब समुदाय में एटा नया युगिन चेतना विकसित करने जो लक्ष्य यो अत्यंत प्रशंसनीय रहरणीय कार्य रहे को कुरा मैं यहाँ समक्ष निवेदन करना चाहिए संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय अंतर्गत संचालित काली का संस्कृत विद्यापीठ परिवार यहाँ समझने भो रहा शुभकामना का लगी जो अवसर प्रदान करूँ इसका लगी आयोजक मित्रप्रति पुनः पुनः हृदयता आभार एवं कृतज्ञता ज्ञापन करते इसको आशातीत सफलता का लगी म काली का संस्कृत विद्यापीठ परिवार का तरफ हृदयत शुभकामना व्यक्त करते अपना संक्षिप्त भनाई लाई यहीं पूरा करदु जयतु संस्कृतम ओम रेस्पेक्टेड रामचंद्र कड़ेर सर नाउ फॉर द वर्ड्स ऑफ वेर विशिंग आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट विदाउट टेकिंग रंगर डॉक्टर दयाराज डकाल डीन ऑफ फैकल्टी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट पोखरा यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर हिज शॉर्ट एंड स्वीट वर्ड्स फॉर द सक्सेस ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम डॉक्टर दयाराज डकाल Respected chairperson of this program, chief guest, vice chancellor, 
Pokhara University, distinguished guest, registrar, Professor Dr. Deepak Bahadur Bandari, distinguished guest from different country, and all the distinguished guests on the dais. and all the participants, faculty, journalists, very good morning from this dais. First of all, I would like to thank Oxford management team for this opportunity. And I would also like to thank for Oxford College for a selection this wonderful topic, very relevant topic, green technology and talent management, very contemporary issues. So I hope, I hope all the paper presentators all the paper presentators give value addition, very good information, right information, needy information from the paper. And I hope, I hope all this paper contribution, paper's contribution will definitely Add value addition in the society. You know, whatever the international conference, whatever the topic, whoever the presenter, if that paper, if that conference do not give value addition in the society, then it doesn't matter. Every paper. And every international conference must give some value addition to the society. And I hope this conference definitely adds some value addition to the society. And one more thing, what I want to add here, all the research paper, all the the green, green technology, talent and management, whatever the, the topics. If this topic, if the contribution from this in, uh, conference do not respect humanitarian ground, do not respect humanity, then again, I said, we have to think again. You must give, you must respect, your paper respect, your value addition respect the humanity. Because if you are, if your paper, if your paper, uh, your value addition do not respect the humanity, we are, we are suffering from nowadays, number of fight, number of war is ongoing. That is big, that is because of lack of humanity. People are corrupted here, corrupted. People uh, irritate to others. People do not respect to others. They are most selfish. They only think about their self-interest. What does it mean? It is lack of humanity. Therefore, what I suggest to you from this conference, from this international conference, we hope, we hope you all respect the humanity. From your paper, from your contribution, this green management, this talented management, please think about the humanity, think about the social value. If so, then definitely this conference is go will going to be very success and I hope I am very confident, I am very confident 
the export management team doing very well and think about this uh, humanity think about this social value and going this conference great success so once again best wishes for this international conference success thank you very much thank you dr dayaraj dakal dean of management studies pokhara university we are we, are, we would like to apologize for technical arrangement uh, before inviting our international guest i would like to invite here bim kandel principal of noble academy a sister organization of oxford college of engineering and management to deliver his short wish speech and best wishes for the success of this program bim kandel ah uh, dhar dhar dhanyawad कार्यक्रम संचालक जो आज असाध्य महत्वपूर्ण घड़ी में ओसिम्स इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ये भेला का अंतरराष्ट्रीय भेला का श्रद्धा अध्यक्ष अक्सफोर्ड कलेज का फाउंडर प्रिंसिपल इंजीनियर हरिप्रसाद भंडारीजी ये असाध्य महत्वपूर्ण इंटरनेशनल अंतरराष्ट्रीय लेवलक सभा को प्रमुख अतिथि पोखरा विश्वविद्यालय का भिसी रैस में आसन ग्रहण कर विशेष अतिथिजी विभिन्न अंतरराष्ट्रीय क्षेत्र अंतरराष्ट्रीय देश अक्सफोर्ड कलेज को निमंत्रण स्वीकार कर उपस्थित रहू भैया हमारा अंतरराष्ट्रीय अतिथिगण र महत्वपूर्ण कार्यक्रम में आपको व्यस्त समय थाती राखे अक्सफोर्ड कलेज को निमंत्रण स्वीकार उपस्थित रहने भाग संपूर्ण इस कार्यक्रम में यह अंतरराष्ट्रीय लेवल को सभा में उपस्थित रहने भाग महिला तथा सज्जन बेन सब मैं प्रतिनिधित्व कर विद्यालय नोबल एकेडेमी आवास माध्यमिक विद्यालय काओसोती रक्सफोर्ड कलेज अंतर्गत का विद्यालय के तरफ मैं हार्दिक अभिवादन व्यक्त करना चाहूँ र हार्दिक नमन करना चाहूँ र आज यो डैस में यह कार्यक्रम को सफलता को शुभ काम रहने जो अवसर दिव म आयोजक प्रति पुनः आभार प्रकट करते धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ रहा हमें धरें कुछ भन्न भापनी आज यो महत्वपूर्ण असाध्य यो यो सम्मानित सभा में आज अक्सफोर्ड कलेज को प्रगति हे हमें आज यो एटा कोलाबरेशन को क्षेत्र में आपूला अगड़ी बढ़ाने मात्र होना आज हिज अक्सफोर्ड कलेज ने कर प्रगति विभिन्न देश अवारेड भो कलेज आज इसलिए यह जिला को नवलपुर को मात्र होना यह देश को मात्र होना आज अंतरराष्ट्रीय क्षेत्र में अक्सफोर्ड कलेज चिन्न रक्सफोर्ड कलेज चिना रक्सफोर्ड कलेज को परिवार का हमी चिन्हन का लगी आज अक्सफोर्ड कलेज ने जो भूमिका निर्वाह कर असाध्य इस सम्मान करते यो इसका फाउंडर हरिप्रसाद भंडारी प्रति म कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करना चाहूँ र आज यहाँ हम अगाड़ी पोखरा विश्वविद्यालय को भिसी को पोखरा विश्वविद्यालय को रजिस्ट्रार को अगाड़ी आज अक्सफोर्ड कलेज मत यो देश रदेश में आज अवारेड भाग आज पोखरा विश्वविद्यालय नहीं आज अक्सफोर्ड कलेज ने शीर ठाड़ो बनाने का लगी आज ये मूलुक में रहकर हर एक विश्वविद्यालय कौन आज पो पोखरा विश्वविद्यालय अक्सफोर्ड कलेज के नाम बट अब्बल भाई कुछ आज मूलुक भरी अंतरराष्ट्रीय क्षेत्र में इसलिए चर्चा प्रदान तसर्थ म पोखरा विश्वविद्यालय का आदरणीय भाइस चांसलर सर रजिस्ट्रार सर के अनुरोध करना चाहूँ वास्तवम विश्वविद्यालय ने दिनी अनुदान में अक्सफोर्ड कलेज जस्त कलेज दिन पर्च रक्सफोर्ड कलेज अब अक्सफोर्ड कलेज आप विश्वविद्यालय में रूपांतरण होने हो कि भाई हमें हमीर तस्त भूमिका आज अक्सफोर्ड कलेज खेली रख तसर्थ यह शीर ठाड़ो पारने यो विश्वविद्यालयक इज्जत राखने काम अक्सफोर्ड कलेज करना तब हमी आज जो अक्सफोर्ड कलेज ने खेले भूमिका लराहने करूँ अज इस हमें हमारे क्षेत्र कर पर्ने सहयोग के रहता हम तेस में प्रतिबद्ध छूं यह अक्सफोर्ड कलेज को कारण आज हम तई हम जिला को यह मूलुक को रंतराष्ट्रीय क्षेत्र में हम चिन्ह सफल भाग तसर्थ ये कुरा में अज हम आप लगन का लगी म सबला अनुरोध करते आज योग यो अंतरराष्ट्रीय भेला में 
हमीला आमंत्रण करें पुनः यह कार्यक्रम को सफलता को सुमरा शुभकामना रहने अवसर प्रदान कर फिर भी अक्सफोर्ड कलेज प्रति हार्दिक धन्यवाद ज्ञापन करते यहाँ का संचालक प्रति हार्दिक धन्यवाद ज्ञापन करते यह कलेज को अज उत्तरतर प्रगति कामना का साथ आप भनाई अंत्य कर धन्यवाद नमस्कार प्रिजेन्स अफ डॉक्टर रविन्द्र हिमीरे प्लीज आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट हिम हिंद द स्टेज टू टेक सीट एज एज आवर स्पेशल गेस्ट From Pokhara University, I would like to request Dr. Thomas Kohler, Research Director, Center for Open Digital Innovation and Participation at TU Dresden, Germany, to kindly share a few words with us. From Germany, to deliver his speech for the success of the program. Thank you. Good morning. It's a great pleasure staying here on behalf of. The Theodore's Institute for Further and Continuous Education, but as well, I think it must work. Okay. Good morning. It's a great pleasure standing here on behalf. Also, okay. Good morning. It's a great pleasure standing here on behalf of the Theodore's Institute for Further and Continuous Education, as well of the Center of Open Digital Innovation and Participation. Indeed, this conference uh, has been very nicely implemented into the into the, yeah has been very nicely implemented uh, by Oxford College of Engineering and Management here in Nepal, and it's a great honor being part of the conference. Hoping for a successful completion of the conference today and tomorrow, and as well uh, trying to submit a fruitful. Contribution into the discourse with the colleagues, not only from the Nepalese partnering institutes, but as well together with the colleagues from uh, the Netherlands, from Malaysia, from Indonesia, and uh, many other places uh, in Asia and beyond. The conference, with a special focus uh, given to green technologies, matches a state-of-the-art development. That has a special meaning for the development here in the uh, higher education sector of Nepal, but it's meaningful as well for us, for example, in Dresden at the University of Technology, where we're having research about, on the one hand, future engineering developments, on the other hand, as well, about the qualification needs in relation to local, national, and global labor markets. So uh, the intersection of the different topics uh, dealing with uh, domains of engineering, but as well sustainability and green ecology, um, may be considered as a prototypical configuration at, uh, the, uh, that, that employs or needs to employ knowledge from different uh, sectors. And I'm sure that this venue here provides an ideal opportunity for exchanging. And thank you so much for the hosting university. Thank you very much for the um, Dr. Adhikari for supporting us coming here. And uh, let me congratulate that you have started this venue here at the place, which looks quite new. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kurel, Thomas Kurel from Germany. We feel really great and privileged to have you here all through Germany to Nepal. And not only Oxford College, this Nepalese society would like to welcome you all in our ground in the middle part of the country, Nepal. Not only the Thomas, all our international guests, you are again welcomed for you and we value your time and presence here. Now, as we have more programs scheduled, we are, we are very sorry, we are not able to take many speeches here. So I would like to request Dr. Deepak Bahadur Bhandari, Registrar of Pokhara University, to deliver his words of success of this program. And Dr. Bhandari, as a part of Ox Pokhara University, Oxford College of Engineering and Management, feel proud to have you here. And now the words from Dr. Bhandari. Our respected 
चेयरपर्सन एंड द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ऑक्सफोर्ड कॉलेज रेस्पेक्टेड चीफ गेस्ट एंड वाइस चांसलर ऑफ द पोखरा पोखरा यूनिवर्सिटी रेस्पेक्टेड डीन सर डिस्टिंगिट गेस्ट रेस्पेक्टेड कॉन्फ्रेंस कन्वेनर वैल्युएबल स्पीकर ऑन द बैरिस्ट टॉपिक्स ऑफ द थीम्स ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस फैकल्टीज स्टूडेंट स्टाफ लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एम डीपली ऑनर एंड प्रिविलेज टू बी हेयर टूडे टू ज्वाइन यू इन दिस मोमेंटम ग्रैंड सर ओपनिंग ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस इन द प्रेस्टिज Oxford Oxford College of Engineering and Management So I would like to begin my thinking thanking the Oxford College for inviting me to speak today in the commencement ceremony realizing the immense significance and very wide scope of the themes I am quite hesitate to pronounce anything in tight word therefore I think it will be safer for me to hit around the general periphery of this larger than world importance of the themes of this conference I will rather prefer to literate myself by listening to the in right scholars gather here i think we have gathered here largely to discuss that green green technology and talent management in business are complement to each other it is generally regarded that innovation may come from anyone anywhere at any time however modern biz modern business model are product of a deep insight in re in research innovations and technology through talent management green energy uh, uh, green green technology have become the vital key to business success today one may take a business model construct as separate from technology but they they may soon realize that it is fundamentally linked with technological innovation therefore therefore a business model system must despite the cause and effect the relationship and must provide a basis for clarification or classification this relationship of business with technology can be formulated in two way in two way manner the first the first model establishes the link between green technology and business performance and second the foster openness and talent management technology transfer people's access to information goods and services and it can spur the overall economic growth and scale of business outcomes the acceleration of technology gets gets faster and faster so the business leader who fail to understand the connection between technology and talent talent management and how technology affect business will limit themselves on the ways rung up the ladder of the world of the business in this 21st of the century it has become a core competence even to our student today to understand the relation green technology and talent management in management education 
furthermore it will be too naive and impure visions in business to talk about the business model without considering over the relationship and significance of technology in business where the ai is gaining over space in the corporate world the the unprecedented impact of the on the revolutionary innovations in technological world may range from the better decision making to improve speed of business to better quality and reduction of human error to continue innovation and so on and on the highly learned pundit gather here from far and wide will be shedding enough light in the explorations of this newly emerged green technology of ai in business research and innovation finally i am very hopeful that scholarly discuss here will spot light the most pressing issue and complex challenge of the business world through the infusion of green technology and talent management in business i wish a great success with lasting result of this conference thank you thank you very much thank you dr deepak bahadur bandari registrar pokhara university for your valuable words now while taking one of the most valuable words personality one of the personality not only of pokhara university national figure in academic field of academic academic sector of nepal our chief guest professor dr prem narayan aryal vice chancellor of pokhara university we really feel proud honored and privileged to have you here in this grand program i would like to request professor dr prem narayan aryal chief guest to address this program with his valuable words international conference on green technology and and talent management dear registrar deans and foreign delegates foreign keynote speakers renowned professors and distinguished guests on the dais and distinguished participants first of all i want to express my heartfelt gratitude to your esteemed institutions for organizing this type of international conference on green technology and talent management i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the organizing team for inviting myself and registrar and deans in this international conference to express our feelings and organizing international conference poses significant challenges in terms of financing technology establishing a network of researchers now we are here not only national international renowned professors are participating in this conference this is possible because of intellectual and good networking practice of our principal of oxford college the main focus of this event of 
Yes, advancement in management, social science, computer science, and engineering, offering a unique platform for an international exchange of ideas and best practices. The program includes keynote addresses, paper presentations, networking sessions, panel discussions on critical topics such as talent management, women capital, corporates, strategy, and green technology for smart city and, and society. Now we have to learn. This is the 21st century of digital for digitalization. We are learning. We are keeping hybrid mode on learning and teaching. Now I would like to add, learning is not only learning. Sometimes unlearning is learning and relearning is learning. So, our traditional practices, if they hamper our <coughs> growth, intellectual development, then we have to re unlearn them and less relearn new things. So, this event, this conference, which promotes us to do all these things. <coughs> Green technology, the themes, income passes, smart city applications, Yes, information technologies, business impact, and artificial intelligence, environmental information, business impact, artificial intelligence, and lifestyle management. We are changing our lifestyle. Let's see the COVID-19. We started our traditional way of greetings traditional way of namaste namaste hai bhaneu anga mal garne chhod diyo yes this is the culture so we have unlearned we have forgotten our traditional values let's relearn that forgotten one this conference covers technique yes teaching and learning focusing on intellectual practices, assessment methods, and curriculum design and adult training. It is said, traditionally it is said that curriculum is a tool in the hand of an artist to mold his materials according to his ideals in his studio. But now, curriculum is not only a tool. It is a means, it is a way of learning. Curriculum is guided and learning experiences formulated through the reconstruction of knowledge and experiences in social personal competence. Look here, we are developing, we are growing, and we are changing the, the nature and definition of curriculum. I appreciate your commitment to academic excellence and your Yes, contribution to the advancement of knowledge. The conference will certainly convene scholars, researchers, experts from diverse fields, fostering collaboration and stimulating intellectual development. Your endeavor have not only elevated the academic reputation of your college, but also enhanced the strengths of our university and contributed to the progress of our nation. Pokhara University is the university, the first university that has patent right in Nepal. It is proud to say here that we provide most technical and practical and innovative courses. Let's make our university more practical. In this crucial era, research plays a crucial role, and I am highly influenced by, by the active engagement of 
Oxford College of Engineering and Management faculty members in research endeavors. Engaging in research is paramount to enhancing the quality of education and propelling the growth of our institutions. The knowledge and insights gained through research are fundamental to our society. I extend my deepest gratitude to the Oxford College of Engineering and Management Research Management Sale and the entire organizing team for their outstanding effort and their unwavering dedication in organizing this conference. Your commitment to academic excellence and research sets a commendable example and I am confident that this event will inspire others to pursue similar understanding. I have observed some five or six international conferences organized by our affiliated colleges. And these colleges have been here for three or four times to observe this type of international conferences. This is the way of raising the quality of higher education. So I would heartily like to congratulate you and these lessons should be learned by other affiliated colleges and Pokhara University has requested all university campuses to establish research management set. And I think the research management set of this college is working hard efficiently to influence others. I eagerly anticipate our ongoing yes, collaboration and the prospect of witnessing future academic accomplishments as your esteem, from your esteemed institutions. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks and warm regards for your dedication, effort, and this practice to uplift the quality of higher education in Nepal. It will serve not only your college, other colleges will learn messages and lessons, and our nation will get real movement in the development. And I would like to express my thanks to the foreign delegates, keynote speakers, researchers, and all the researchers and participants. Let's learn, let's unlearn, and let's relearn. Let's make our learning ability continuous in this universe. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Respected Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Prem Narayan Aryal, sir, for your valuable words. I would like to invite our student of Oxford Secondary School, grade 11-12, for the dance performance on the stage.
great performance and for the information of our international guest the song and the costumes dresses the performers have used belong to the different ethnic group as you know that Nepal is a land a small country but we have the diversity ethnic diversity for your information we have 142 caste and ethnic groups according to the latest census and 124 languages spoken within the small territory of land. So these dresses belong to the different ethnic group. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, before heading to the ending of the former session opening ceremony, we have a short program here, MOU exchanging program between Oxford College of Engineering and Management and the University of Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And our guests, they are not here just to present their papers and for their sessions. We are here to start a new journey to collaborate our activities in the days to come. To, uh, to proceed this further, I would like to invite our international relation officer and resource head, resource department head, Dr. Basanta Dikari. I would like to hand over this mic to Mr. Sorry, Dr. Basanta Dikari. Thank you, Prem Sir. Uh, still, still good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm not talking much more about the theme of the things. I just want to focus on cooperation between OCM or Oxford College of Engineering and Management and University of Indonesia, Jakarta. So uh, first of all, I would like to request our principal, Professor Hari Prasad Bhandari, to be here, kindly to be here. In the same way, uh, our BC of Pokhara University, please be seated in the same place. And I would like to call Professor Majburi of Indonesia, top professor, to be joined with the. So I would like to call Majburi, Professor Majburi, and Professor Dr. Nurtanyo Agus, Dean Faculty of Education, Science and Psychology. In the same way, Dr. Arun Dharmawati, Coordinator, UUIK FPB University. In the same way, Dr. Penny, uh, Secretary Department of Management, Yap EEB University. And please be here, please be here. In the same way, Haninka, 
a senior research master students of the same university. In this occasion, I would like to call our international associate professor, Dr. Shen, Shen to be there. And in the same way, top German researchers, top German professor, Thomas Kohler, to join in the program. And we will have just share our paper. And a long discussion will be focused in the evening time. So, uh, I am very much happy. I'm very much happy to have a cooperation in the field of... Yes. <laughs> in the field of research and technology. So, it is not only ours, it is all of yours. We, it's ours, not me, not Oxford. It is ours. So that we can work together in the same field. If you are there, we can go ahead. Thank you. I would like to uh, request uh, Dr. Arun Dharmawati to share paper through uh, Professor Buri. Just please. contributed the knowledge to us and Nepali society. From the to receive the token of love, love from the side of Oxford College of Engineering and Management, we will invite our guests here and for to distribute the token of love.
to our guest we would like to invite our chief guest professor dr prem narayan aryal i would like to request him to be here to distribute our token of love to the our distinguished guests from different countries and different part of the country and similarly i would like to request our registrar sir deepak bahadur bhandari sir as well professor dr deepak bahadur bhandari sir as well and to assist along with them our respected chairperson founder principal of this college professor engineer hari bhandari we would like to invite three of you so first we have here professor dr liu cha suan professor dr notranio agas purwanto professor dr thomas kolar Similarly we have here Professor Dr Binay Kumar Mishra As a Professor Dr Anjay Kumar Mishra Associate Professor Dr Ravindra Gimire We have here associate professor Dr. Dayaraj Dakal Professor Dr. Deepak Bahadur Bhandari Now I would like to invite Professor Dr. Prem Narayan Aryal our chief guest and vice chancellor of Pokhara University thank you all of you for your valuable time and words towards the success of this program we really feel proud honored we feel privileged to have you all here in front of us your blessings and insightful words would ignite the journey ahead inspiring all gathered here to embark on this intellectual voyage with vigor and purpose i request you to kindly come on the stage and have a few words a uh, respected chief guest vice chancellor of the pokhara university professor dr prem naren aryal sir distinguished guest registrar Professor Dr. Deepak Bahadur Bhandari sir, special guest, Dean, Faculty of Management, Associate Professor Dr. Dayaraj Rakal sir. Similarly, the guest, Anjan sir, Puran sir, Puran sir. Similarly, our international distinguished guest. Professor Dr Thomas from Germany similarly Professor Dr Moche Buri from Indonesia Professor Dr Mufunio 
Agus from Indonesia, Halin Kara Ithaf Sani, Associate Professor Dr. Lucha from Netherlands, Dr. Arum Dharma Awanti, Dr. Panya, and some more guests from the international. One more guest from China. He is coming. Probably he is going to participate by tomorrow. And another international guest is coming by tomorrow. He is on the way. My speech is not only thanks speech. My speech is a speech of welcome to. I would like to welcome all of you to the event entitled International Conference on Green Technology and Channel Management. In fact, we are welcoming you to the forefront of innovation and collaboration in the scenic city of Narangar. We are really very happy to be enjoying the river site of Narini River and valley oriented geographical locations of Nepal. We are convey for the international con conference on the green technology and talent management. We are thrilled to have your expertise and insight in reaching our discussion. Your passions underscores the national and the global importance of sustainable, technological and effective talent strategy in shaping our future. Let's explore together the avenue of greener, more sustainable world while tuning and harnessing the talent of today's and tomorrow. Welcome to vibrant, excellent of idea of the knowledge and knowledge management. This is our first practice. So there may be a lot of points of improvement. Hope you all coordinate to boost our intention for the further improvement. Now we have the two terminology. One is green technology, another one is talent management. The green technology stands for the beacon of hope in our collective quest for a sustainable future. It's important, cannot be overstrained as it offers innovative solution to mitigate environmental degradations, combat climate change, and foster economic growth simultaneously. Embarking green technology not only reduce our carbon footprint, but also promote resources, efficiency, enhance public health, and create a new avenue for employment and economic prosperity. By harnessing renewable energy resources, developing eco-friendly materials, and implementing smart, sustainable practice across industries, we pave the way of healthier planet and more realistic society. The value of the green technology lies not just in its ability to address pressing environmental challenges but also in the capability to inspire a global shift towards responsible step shifts of our precious natural resources for generation to come. Now we have the next topic that is the talent management in the cornerstones of the organization success. Embodying the recognitions and cultivations of individual skills, potentials, and inspiration within the company by strategically identifying, attracting, developing, and retaining top talent, organizing and ensure their competitiveness and reliance in dynamic market. Effective talent management practice not only optimize workforce performance but also foster a culture of the innovation, collaboration and continuous improvement. 
by investigating in the employee growth and well-being organizations attendance, employee engagement, loyalties and satisfaction, ultimately driving higher productivity, the business outcomes. In enhanced talent management is not just about the recruiting the best individual but also about unlocking their full potential to drive organization excellence, growth and sustainable success for the whole country like developing country Nepal. In conclusion, both green technology and tunnel management are pivotal pillars in shaping a sustainable and successful future. Green technology offer innovation, solutions to environmental challenges while driving economic growth and resource efficiency. Simultaneously, talent management ensure that organization harness and full potential of their workforce. Technology, talent management practices, organization can create synergies that drive sustainable development. Economic prosperity and social well-being ultimately paving the way for brighter and more reliant futures. Now, this is another important day for the Oxford College family. We are getting such a beautiful environment and this beautiful environment we are getting our guardian, Vice-Chancellor of the Pokhara University and Registrar, Dean and whole member of the Pokhara University. Not only that, our international partner from the, the six countries, they are in this seminar naturally insight or and encourage our futures and our abilities in days to come. Today we are getting another very big opportunity and we have made the signing ceremony. Oxford College is affiliated from the Pokhara Uni University, but we have numerous MU agreement with the different university of the world. Similarly, today we are getting this big opportunity with signing with the Indonesia Jakarta University. Thank you making such a wonderful signing ceremony. Thank you very much. All the participants who are coming from the Indonesia. Similarly, I would like to give the thanks to all the international guests, national guests, and all the paper presenters, keynote speakers, and all the, the, the intellectuals who are participating in this program. Not only that, our reporters are reporting this news. We are here in this locality, but we want to give the education not only the national level, we want to give the education of the international level. We are hoping, we are shaping, and we are thinking, we are managing in a such a way. In the end of this my speech, one thing I want to pronounce, within this month, we have prepared this international type of the seminar hall and all these things. For that, various members of the organization has involved to this program. I would like to give the best thanks to them. And finally, I should not have to forget two members of the research committee. Sarad Kafre sir, coordinators, and our chairman of research, Basanta, Dr. Basanta Adhikari, I would like to, to give, in our most side of heart, I would like to give them the best thanks to him. And finally, this is the program we have initiated, and there may be a lot of mistakes. We are hoping in the days to come, we are going to, to analyze each and every small mistakes, and we are going to improve. Hope you are going to give such type of the environment to us. And finally, I'd like to, to thank all of you who have participated in this program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, respected chairperson, as well as the founder principal of Oxford College of Engineering and Management, Professor Engineer Hari Bandari, sir. As you have been already advice the opening session of this program is already over and the next session is panel discussion on the theme
on the theme Green Technology and Talent Management to read the program session panel discussion to proceed this session I would like to hand over this stage to Dr. Basanta Adhikari Basanta Adhikari Head of Research Department Oxford College Thank you Prem Sir uh, It's time for panel discussion so uh, I would like to I would like to request to all the dash higher personality to be seated back but I only request for the panel discussion to be here in the main dash uh, we talk about green technology I am a child of green technology I don't have that much knowledge but I would like to make it under the discussion debate what is the role of green technology in this contemporary society so I would like to request Professor Dr. Thomas Kola to be participated in the panel discussion. Please give a big hand to him. Thank you. Big hand, please. Big hand. I didn't have that clapping, please. Yes. Similarly, Professor Dr. Machpuri Trino Triano to be seated here and Associate Professor Dr. Binay Kumar Misra, School of Engineering, Pokhara University. And similarly, Professor Dr. Anjay Kumar Misra, Kathmandu College of Management, Nepal. And next one is, I will talk Dr. Shen Liu, Wittenberg University, Applied Science, Netherlands. Other, other guests are kindly requested to be seated there and we start from the panel discussion. I would like to close the formal sessions right now and please be seated all distinguished guests over there and we have break for five minutes. After five minutes we have interesting discussion with the different ideas of different international and national scholars. So please five minute break then back to the back to the hall we go on discussion thank you behind to him and similarly uh, I'd like to request Dr. Shan Liu to be participated in the uh, our, in our panel discussion green growth recovery has recently emerged as a popular topics among academicians after the COVID-19 pandemic because the top, it is a very hot topic. After COVID-19, it has got higher emerging issue nationally and internationally. So, issues of green technology, there are so many issues. So, we can talk about ethical consideration in green technology adoption. We can talk like that. Similarly, innovation and entrepreneurship in green technology and digital transformation in sustainable development and data analysis for in environment impact assessment and smart cities and sustainable urban development and similarly 
green technology in agriculture and food system and remote work and sustainable practices, smart way of waste management, AI in academia. These are the current issue of green technology. So, for the, for the IT assistance, I need one assistance here, please. Just be handed the mic to our panelist. Who is here? I need this person right now. And so, first of all, we are warming now. The term green recovery now described as a fundamental approach for reviewing cities and improving the quality of people. After the improvement of green technology, we should focus to our society as previous speaker, Dr. Dairaj Dhakal, noted. We should focus to the society. We should connect to the society so we can discuss how we can connect green technology with the society and improvements of the people of the society. So we can do like that. Thank you. First of all, now I am going to open the sessions. We have first five panelists. So once more, please clap them. Once more, please clap them. Clap them. Everybody clap them. Yes. Yes. And uh, I am here. First of all, I would like to request uh, to, to give his very, very important thought, his opinions, his experience, his idea on green technology. Associate Professor Binay Kumar Misra, he will give his idea. Okay, so good morning to all of you. It is my great pleasure to be here and uh, uh, share my some of the experiences uh, which uh, I have come through uh, in the past 10-15 uh, years. So first of all I would like to congratulate the organizer for uh, this uh, very relevant and timely theme on this green technology and uh, because in the context of this uh, rapidly changing world the importance of green technology is very important since uh, uh, first of all i would like to say that from this uh, rapidly changing world we need to understand that uh, the uh, factors like uh, urbanization in case of our context or in case of Nepal, the urbanization is a very serious issue uh, as well as in the globe, in the world as well because uh, these days more than half of the global population lives in urban center and in context of developing country, the uh, urbanized, urbanization is quite haphazard, very unplanned, like the infrastructure we need or the planning we need, that is not in the pace of urbanization. So, the haphazard urbanization has led several uh, kind of uh, negative problems. Similarly, the other issues we see the, in, the in this rapidly changing world like climate change. So, we find that the climate change has also been impacting more or less every sector. Some of the sectors are uh, more impacted, some could be relatively lesser one. And uh, since I have been working in the field of water, especially the urban water, so 
I would share that like uh, the climate change, urbanization, or land cover change. Uh, that has these factors have very uh, serious negative impact on uh, ground water, the flood disasters, river pollution. For example, we can say in our uh, cities like Kathmandu or other cities, the rivers are very much polluted. And one of the reasons could be the haphazard urbanization and also at alteration in the uh, river stream, uh, stream flow characteristics. So in that context, the application of this green technology is very important because these changes are kind of very uncertain. We don't know about how the urbanization will take place in the future or how exactly the climate change is going to impact the water bodies or other sector. So in that sense, the global change factors like the land cover, the climate change, the urbanization, we cannot exactly predict. And since we don't know exactly the future, uh, we cannot go for very specific structural countermeasures because that needs large investment. And in the uncertain future, the large uncertain, large or expensive infrastructure may not be very relevant. So in that context, the use of green technology from which we know that the environmental friendly countermeasures or the soft measures and usually the soft measures are less expensive. So in context of this uh, uncertain future, the green technology could be very important. And the measures like uh, the uh, measures like the focus on the rainfall harvesting or focus on uh, infiltration measures, pervious pavement, and several which can help us to reduce the extent of urban flooding. It will help in uh, increasing the groundwater level. In other sense, it can help the water supply scarcity. So there could be several soft measures or the environmental friendly measures and uh, we can find it has been successfully applied in several countries, especially the developed countries like uh, tomorrow I'll be talking on a specific some quantitative analysis how the application of uh, this green technology or the soft measures have helped on reducing the urban flood or enhancing the groundwater uh, by considering the case of uh, Hanoi, the case of Tokyo. Uh, so I think I should stop here. And maybe if you have questions, maybe I will take those questions and respond to you later. So thank you. Professor, I'm Professor Anja Binay Kumar Mishra for his great thought as he concluded that without green technology, I think now it is a very difficult to survive in the society because most of the natural resources has been exploited excessively. So, there is a question, what will happen after 30 years if we use the same way, use our resources, natural resources? We will see that. What happened to humankind at that time? It's a big question. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, now, you know, in my mind, I am not taking much more in my mind. Uh, we should focus on green technology in each aspect. 
so my question is here is there any connection between the high grain utility performance and integrating green technology my question is that is there any connection between the high grain utility performance and integrating green technology so these are the some questions we can discuss and we can focus in the coming in this discussion so now i would like to request uh, to take part in this talk in this panel talk uh, associate professor dr shen i would like to request her to give her thought about the green technology thank you day everyone my name is Jia Xuan Liu so it is really nice to be in Nepal again and talk to you I noticed that not many uh, girls here to participate in science and technology di dialogues uh, or conversations so I'm very happy to present you to be here to share my point of view with you so if we talking about the green technology what do you think in your mind what is green technology if according to the textbook it means uh, the technology that contribute to reduce the uh, environmental impact uh, for our world but I have different ideas instead of uh, reducing maybe we need to thinking about the technology or science that contribute to the sustainability of our life or world so that is my ideas and if we take it into account from the management point of view so I know some of you are from the management department from the management point of view we are talking about the environmental the social so the social impact and also the governance so if you take this uh, into account uh, green technology also have its meaning for the social responsibility of the management uh, and also for the governments uh, so from the government uh, policies to individual management for the technology development uh, we should all take into account so that is my point of view and I welcome for the debate maybe for later thank you thank you dr. San Liu for her great thought so uh, as we know I'm not talking nationally internationally also I am very much afraid of the society the way it has been running these days so people are not aware about the environmental protection I am not blaming special nations I am not talking about that but the way where we are moving there is no exit so we have to think earlier our society is going away there is no exit you will be there return back so if we have to return back from the same in the same place why should we not think earlier about the green technology if we go through the green technology we can preserve our environment if there is no environment there is no resource then I have a questions what is the humanity how we can survive how we can exist for a longer time this is a very very hard question everywhere all many research many scholars they are talking about the sustainability talking about the sustainable development that sustainable development is possible through green technology that is in my mind I may be wrong thank you next uh, I would like to request to take part in the panel discussion our reputed professor Dr. Anjani Kumar Mishra to give his thought. Thank you. Give a big hand to him. Clap please clap. Why you are not clapping us? Thank you. 
थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग हियर एंड ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी इज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ हैबिट ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी इज रिलेटेड टू सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड इट्स समथिंग दैट रिड्यूस लेवल ऑफ पोल्यूशन हैज बीन ऑलरेडी हाईलाइटेड बियॉन्ड दैट आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सटेंड इट्स जस्ट फॉर्मेशन ऑफ हैबिट टू यूज टेक्नोलॉजी इफिशियंटली ऑल द टेक्नोलॉजी कुड बी ग्रीन इफ ह्यूमन बिहेवियर आर कंट्रोल टू यूज इट सो द टेक्नोलॉजी द पीपल द पर्सन हु इन्वेंट द टेक्नोलॉजी हैज नेवर एज्यूम दैट इट विल ब्रिंग द डार्क साइट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी दे ब्रिंग दैट इट विल बी यूटिलाइज फॉर ह्यूमन काइंड एंड द वे यू यूटिलाइज द टेक्नोलॉजी डिटरमाइंड वेदर इट इज ग्रीन और नॉट दिस माई कुड बी ऑल्सो ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दिस कुड नॉट बी अ ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी ऑल्सो एज यू हैव ऑलरेडी डेवलप द गाइडलाइंस एंड स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉर मेंटेनिंग साउंड एट वर्किंग प्लेस इन टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटी थ्री सो बिफोर सेवन एट ईयर्स यू हैव डेवलप दैट स्टैंडर्ड्स बट दिस स्टैंडर्ड इज नॉट फॉलोड हेयर ऑल्सो सो दिस 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 मे मेक्स अस टू क्लियर दैट दिस इज सम हाउ लैकिंग इन आवर हैबिट्स टू कल्टिवेट हाउ द टेक्नोलॉजी इज बींग यूटिलाइज बींग नेपाली If we go and see, our contribution is not much in uh, polluting the environment. Since our production is only 0.5 CO2, in comparison to India and uh, China, it's very less, as they are producing 1.93 CO2 per person. The Indians are, and uh, from the China, it is coming uh, 3.58 something around 3.58, which is massive. but it does not make sense which country is producing how much co2 the impact is much more in nepal the impact is much more in nepal so our contribution in production of co2 is less though the effect is more effect is more how can we say that effect is more it has been already proved that 7th april of the year has been declared one of the hottest day kathmandu is declared one of the most polluted city this all is what impacts and effects of this uh, changing circumstances nepal is said that it is a small world in itself it has all different types of ecology the ecology except marine ecology all those ecology which we expects are generally found in nepal so this also creates challenges if there would be one type of change then its impact will be everywhere since ecosystem is connected and in ecosystem if you are making one simple change that is bringing changes everywhere so all about formation of habit how we are changing the technology so how we are using the technology so formation of habit is green technology anything could be green technology if we use it efficiently and effectively so some of the good practices has been already started in nepal that i would like to showcase like vertical agriculture a project under vertical agriculture has been initiated by nepal agriculture research council that's also aspect how we can minimize the effect of environmental impact on uh, society through good practices of agriculture dry toilets has been initi initiated to be constructed in particularly hilly region and going much behind this green technology awareness has been already started in nepal since long before the day on which we are organizing this international conference is also somehow related to green technology initiatives because today is called akshay tritiya in nepali society this day is celebrated particularly for creating the awareness on how to fight against hotter days how to make sustainability how to defend ourselves how to adopt ourselves in changing climate this initiative has been taken long back in nepal that is akshay tritiya so today is the day this also shows we are much more aware about green technology but only the things we are not bringing it into practice so it needs to be brought into practice and implementation right now so besides this also i would like to give another example water supply in water supply systems we used to use a stone spout that stone spout is nothing but climate resilience water supply systems because we used to use wooden wooden uh, pipes 
to take water from one place to another as a supply chain. If you compare in Himalaya region of Nepal, the brushing of pipe is maximum due to changing temperature. If you would have replaced the same or we have continued the same with that wooden technology, maybe we are, uh, we are not using plastic-based material also and we are also using green technology. So that is also one old practice. It has been found in Nepalese context uh, regarding this. So besides this, internationally also it's focusing a lot like wise and wind manuals are there. So wise and wind manuals of ILO, through that manual also we are uh, trying to adopt as much as possible green technology. So for this moment, I would like to stop and with further questions, I will come back. Thank you so much. Professor Dr. Anjan Kumar Mishra, I, uh, my, I have a very deep concern what he is explaining. He is talking about the challenges of climate change. And he is talking about that we still need awareness. We have to aware the people about the climate change, about the natural resources, what we are using. This is the time so that thank you once more, uh, Professor Dr. Anjani Kumar Mishra, sir. And now I just want to draw some few lines from his speech, from his talk. You know, environmental pollution, geoparadise in dangers. Environmental pollution, geoparadise, oh, in dangers. Uh, ecosystem, human health, and society so that making it pressing problem of the world it is not our problem it is not Nepal's problem it is an international issue everywhere people talk about the climate change pollution environment so as I earlier noted we are not in the right way there is no there is no gateway there is no exit the way which we are moving so we have to come back and think a bit more how we can survive in this world how can we save the energy and power to our future generation is a very big question so this is the time to rethink to do research to find new knowledge so in my mind we need to find new paradigms we need new paradigms to solve this problem so that we can have some other beneficial futures uh, generation other things uh, a critical factor in promoting sustainability in the face of growing environment concern and need to tackle climate change I agree with professor dr. Andhra Kumar Mishra about his statement his attention now I would like to call to join, to support us in the panel discussion. Uh, Professor Dr. Mujburi Trano from Indonesia, please be, give your ideas, thought and experience how we gonna use green technology for the social development. Thank you. May I introduce myself? I am Ruri Triono. Uh, from Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta, Indonesia, the middle of Java. Okay, in uh, my point of view about uh, green technology is uh, we have to know about the tips of green technology and when we have to know about the type of technology or green technology and then we try to take a benefit of green technology adoption because without adoption of green technology I think it's impossible to realize what's the sustainability uh, development in the future and then we are from the academy try to conduct how to try how to give instruction, how to make a program for the young people, for the worker, for the lecturer, 
how to know about implementation of green technology. So for the first time, we will make a like uh, identify the development of green talent because it is important. And then uh, after that, if we have done about the def uh, identify of the developing green talent, and then we try to make a strategy. What strategy that we want to uh, use the issue of green technology in our teaching and learning, in our discussion with the young people, worker in the industry, and teacher, teacher and or lecturer. And then one of the program that we develop about the green technology in my university is about to make a program training development program of green skill. The green skill is uh, the basic of talent management, especially in green technology. And uh, in a development of, sorry, developing of a program in green skills, including using IT issue. And then there are some activities that we uh, uh, take a research using uh, virtual reality, using augmented reality, using um, intellectual uh, uh, intellectual IT, IE, and then uh, another is about how to use uh, like uh, LMS to make more clear uh, to the student or to the trainer, especially to use IT in social media or IT in uh, formal teaching and learning. And of course, when we develop about the uh, uh, informal, uh, sorry, about the uh, augmented reality or virtual reality, we have to have like a special laboratory because without uh, a special laboratory in the research of uh, media in teaching and learning, I think it is impossible. And then we, we try to close to the issue of green uh, uh, technology. Uh, I think that's uh, from my side because I am from the uh, vocational education, so we uh, have a responsible how to conduct the teaching and learning in uh, training and in uh, education, especially in uh, green technology. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mojpuri, uh, for your great thoughts. Uh, he has mainly talked about green technology connect connected with the education as well. So uh, it is we are very close to the panel session. So there is a question. All the time people talk about this question. The question is about what would be an effective strategy? What would be an effective strategy to increase renewable energy, to store energy, to increase renewable energy successfully and decrease the reliance on environment? So people are talking about the environment, talking about the sustainability. We need to find out new paradigms, new strategy, how we can tackle with this very complicated all of natural sources, using natural sources and other things. Because it's still, in Nepal, still we are in the very basic level. So, we need to find new way of surviving people, making, helping human mankind and making our society stressless, making our society happy. So we should think about the green technology to connect with the society, to connect with other aspects. So lastly, uh, our last panelist, uh, I'd like to request Professor Dr. Thomas Kula, 
हेड ऑफ रिसर्च डिपार्टमेंट ड्राइस्टेन जर्मनी एंड हेड ऑफ एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट टू गिव हिज थॉट अबाउट द ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी हाउ वी हैव टू लर्न इन नेपाल हाउ कैन वी गो together how can we work with the international society in order to enhance the green utilization of the green technology so i would like to hand over this mic professor kola thank you so as said before i am directing a center for open digital innovation and participation dealing a lot with innovative technologies on the one hand on the other side uh, as well with the question how those technologies may be implemented into everyday um, well useful uh, practice and uh, when we are talking about uh, green technologies and uh, i would like to reflect about the uh, human capital cap capital and human capacity and uh, indeed uh, one of the major challenges is that uh, the uh, human well capacity is not always distributed in a way that it fits the need for implementing uh those technologies this uh starts with the bigger industries um so we can see for example that the uh, at least that situation in germany i like to briefly report about uh that the uh, big uh, automotive automotive industries are struggling with the green technologies because the workforce they have employed uh and the engineering uh, competency is not perfectly fitting the uh um the uh, needs and the skills and the competencies related to the uh, green technologies so green technology means there is an upskilling or a skill shift needed among those who have uh, a good background in vocational skills but as well those who have a spe specified and focused background in engineering this is on the one side on the other side if we if we have a look into society when we may discover that uh, people uh us as a, as consumers or as prosumers we are somehow as well coding the implementation of those green techs into our everyday routines uh, this is something that is as well challenging so of course one case one may see little things like littering and uh or minor activities that may be implemented in every everyone's daily routines but as well in the in the larger uh, dimension using um and uh, adopting green techs uh, for everyday purposes uh, is perhaps an important aspect and here i like to follow the suggestion of my colleagues uh, who suggested to have some well uh, different ways of uh, well gathering or of of uh, education by using virtual and augmented realities on the one hand on the other hand as well to consider uh, what patterns uh, of joint activity may lead of sharing experiences with others uh, when it comes to the adoption of green technologies it's not only an intergenerational um, issue it's as well um, indeed a, uh, a momentum deeply embedded into uh, cultures so we have certain ways of practicing um, and letting green technologies arrive as well means uh, to be open for societal innovation for individual change uh, and uh, being open for um, new practices of course this uh, this goes along with uncertainty so we may dismiss uh, existing practices uh, as sound somehow revolutionary and indeed it is a kind of a revolutionary approach Uh, because uh, we have our cultures we have our beliefs we have our skills and uh, if we move on to a next trend this is not always uh, certain uh, what we will reach and 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 if we are able to reach out to this next uh, well not next level but to this different uh, condition and so it's not only about training specialists allocating workforce to specific industries but it's as well about embedding knowledge and practice and routines into education into our culture and uh, here i can just see that it's a real challenge uh, and it's shifting society and uh, to an somehow open end well this is what i can see with the technologies and of course i feel as well a chance for the science um in uh well exploring uh the changes but not only from technology driven perspective as well in relation to other social cultural uh and and perhaps even health sciences uh 
in order to understand and to more comprehensively explore the potential meaning of the change for uh, oneself, but as well for the uh, context uh, we are living in. So thank you very much for the opportunity having a first comment here. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Thomas Kohler. Uh, he has drawn very remarkable outlines. What we have to do, what we did, and what we have to do. Thank you, and give a big hand for his speech once more. Please give a big hand. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, now, now I would like to put some questions because we are at the end. So I would like to put some questions, and I would like to request uh, all panelists from your side to provide answer from some questions. Then after we'll go back to the our audience, and they will raise questions, and we'll try to give the answer. And you know, in the context of Nepal, what type of new policy we need to follow the green technology to minimize the environmental degradation? What is the best policy? What would be the best policy? This is the first question. And similarly, for that, what action What action? What action should we take for that? And what should we prepare? What is the preparation for that in future? So these are some questions how to make applications of green technology. And how we can use that one. We need these things in future. So we expect from our a special panelist. Anyone you can give your thoughts for that, no problem. And other thing, there is a very big issue we have. What is that? I talk about, we talk about the policy, we talk about the action, we talk about the preparation, we talk about the application. But Nepal has no money, there is no fund. So how can we address this thing? It's a very big concern. We are on the developed country, we have no funding. Government has not sufficient funding. On the other side, government is not that much concerned about this type of action, these policies. So what we have to go, what we should do, these are the questions from my side. And so please give your thoughts like request. Yeah, if the floor is open, please, I, now I hand over my mic to Anjani Shah. Uh, thank, you, thank you for a very comprehensive question. The questions comes to raise another question sometime as well. So maybe, I don't know how much I'm going to address his question, but I will put some questions also for the solutions at the end. His first question is policy. If you go, go and uh, take care of policy, we have different policies. We have Environmental Protection Act. We have Environmental Protection Regulation that uh, makes sure that the projects are passing through the EIA or IE, Initial Environmental Impact Assessment or Initial Environmental Examination. After impact assessment and examination, depending upon the project size, then only we are implementing project. So provision is already there. We are having labor act. We are having codes like national building code. That also makes yours how we are promoting green technology. Inside our national building code, we are, we are having different provisions of energy efficiency building, passive energy consumption buildings, so these all applications are there in policy. Personally, in my view, policy of Nepal is extremely good. There is no doubt on policy. The second question he was raising on action. When policy is not implemented, then it will not bring any effectiveness. 
So the major weakness to bring those policy into action. And this weakness is not of Nepal, this is an international weakness. Since all the environmental acts found to be made, all the en environmental regulations, environmental agendas are found to be made by developed country. And they want us to implement as well. But they don't come with a clear solution how to work the working mechanism, the organization structure, and the bodies that, do, that has not been decided in any of the environmental act. It is all in all international acts like Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the most comprehensive policy document worldwide available. But in Agenda 21 also, it's not clear how the funding will be managed. So his last part of the question, budgeting, will remain constant. That will not be solved. Which body will be doing what? Organization structure is not cleared. Nepal is definitely under the formation of uh, inclusive government or three tiers of government. So we are having a structure crisis. But this crisis, particularly for environmental points of view, is available internationally also. So that need to be decided when you are making any agendas, any environmental act. There it should be specified from, when fund, from where funding would come, how would it be managed, how the organization structure would be working. So regarding preparation, I just would like to focus. The policies which are already there should be brought into action through ESG. ESG disclosure is a old provisions that need to be done in industrial practice of Nepal. Though its auditing is not there, Nepal has already started to issue green bonds. From the green bonds, also we can go for this, uh, this type of uh, green technology applications. So for applications, actions are there, but these all things need some budget. There we are lacking. So in third parts, what we can work, the last parts, no cost or low cost techniques. I personally prefer to apply no cost or low cost techniques for adopting green technology in context of Nepal, like wind, work improvement for a small enterprises, manual is there. If you apply those manual in your workplace, definitely green technology would come into action. Simple action, I would like to take one example of the same. If you are pushing the things, too much force is going. Uh, if you are pulling the things, too much force is coming. So rather than uh, pulling, you just uh, start to push. By changing this push to pull, energy of a human would be saved. If energy of a human would be saved, definitely he will consume less AC, less fan, then energy would be saved. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for his good, good critical analysis. Clap him once again. I'm sorry, due to the time limit, I couldn't provide a full time. Next, uh, she would like to. Hi, it's Jia Xuan again. I'm from Holland. Stand. OK, I think I'm short, so I need to stand. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I have uh, some notes. Uh, uh, I usually talk less, but you can make notes. Uh, yeah, every word are important. For me, and the thanks to Pasanta's uh, contribution, you're talking about we don't have enough funding, so what can we do for the policies? My first idea is protection needs less funding than treatment. So the first thing for the policy suggestion should be put the prevention earlier than the treatment. So for example, I saw a lot of constructions right now in Nepal, but I'm worried if the government already put uh, the environmental protection before they implement uh, the construction. Because once our nature is destroyed, we need 10, 100 years to restore it. So can we technology to serve the coal instead of uh, destroying it. That is the first point. The second point is we need to take everything into account. So not just the plant, the animals, but also the human. 
I see in the rural areas a lot of uh, people in the villages probably are impacted by the new technology. So the technology should take into account no, uh, we say it is no, uh, left no one behind. So we leave no one behind. The technology is not only served for the people in the cities, but also for the people, the animals, the plants in the villages or the rural areas. Can we take it into account? The last point, so I usually only take three points. I'm a Buddhist. For us, the practice, the meditation, takes two parts. One, it is the wisdom, and another part is compassion. So when we are consider policies, it's not just for the short-term solutions, but also for the long-term considerations. So I always say to people, you need to take one step forward. So not just here, but one step further. Will be now or also for the future. So thank you for the time. Shen Liu for the very important instruction how we're going to save our society, this world. And anyone, please? Yes. Okay, so first of all, like you have. Uh, made the three points like how this green technology is relevant from the policy context and the action and uh, like we have uh, the budget limited funding or lim limitations of money so how it is relevant so these were the three points so in the first context like uh, I think we have to realize from the policy perspective or from the leadership perspective that the concept of development like just constructing the road somewhere that does not make the we have to think that that is not only the development the with the development process like with the construction process we have to also focus on how its implications on the environment like earlier we were expecting somewhere road but now there is a road but again it is so much dusty that we cannot stay there. So we have to rethink on the concept of development, what is that? And some of the policy like our action, for example, we have the building code and there are some regulations to leave this much area like 20% or 30% area, we cannot, we have to, I mean the ground coverage of a building cannot be more than 70 or 80 percent in the uh, building. So we can also make the provision like uh, the, there is the empty area, but uh, that should not be the concretized, that open area. Maybe that should be, the surface should be in such a way that it is not wholly concrete, the, the un unconstructed region that can help in uh, enhancing the groundwater, reducing the urban flood. And the last one, in the context of uh, the limited budget or funding, the thing is, in the beginning I told that uh, uh, green technology is one of the important countermeasure in, in the context of limited budget, limited money. It does not require too much investment. So in that sense also the green technology will be very much relevant in context, in Nepalese context. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for your concrete guidelines. And anyone are you willing to keep answer something? Or should I go back? Or you want to tell something? Okay. So, this is a time of questions. So, first of all, before raising your hand, I would like to hand over this mic to someone. So, should I go move here? Thank, thank you very much. Uh, before I, uh, before I 
saying my some views, some opinion, I remember one article. One article that I read five, six years back. It was top most industrialist, top most industry CEO. They conduct one meeting in Harvard University. And only one agenda they raise, how to get success of business in next 30 years. That was the, that was the agenda. I read the newspaper, I just refer the newspaper's articles, reference. And they discuss the meeting, topmost richest person, topmost popular CEO, they conduct round table meeting. And only one agenda was how to get success in next 30 years. It was the agenda. And they are discussed for two days, continuous two days. And they concluded one. Coming next 30 years, those organization who handle three old, who handle three old, they success. What was that? It was first orange old, next blue old, third green old. Orange old, blue old, and, and green old. Blue old, orange old, and green old. Orange old, what was that? Orange old, like orange, how every piece of orange attach each other. Once you open the, peel the orange, then every piece of orange, they attach each other. It's not like a lemon. It's not like a lemon. All right, you understand? So even the piece is separate, 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 but they attach each other. This is orange old. Those organization who, whose employees, they like, they are arranged, attach each other, they give a common force, unified voice, they get success. One conclusion. Second conclusion, blue old. This is those organization who handle properly to the human resource, they are getting success. And last one is very important that is relevant with this green technology and talent management. So green old, this green old means how you invest, how you sustain, how you respect to the society. So those organizations who respect, who honor people's demand, society's requirement, then are getting success. Those who are ignore this green old, they are not success. They are not success. So what does this green means? You respect to the human being. You respect to the fresh air. Because this is essential for us. Fresh air, no pollution. So whether the organization invest their budget to the green management or not. Th those who are respecting green management, green all, they are getting success. This is the conclusion of this top most CEO's conclusion. So in this context, in this context, this uh, international conference is very relevant very relevant every human being every human being respect their values and respect to the nature so investing in the green technology is respecting to the nature 
once you respecting to the nature you respect to the human being those who are not respecting the human being their business is on success so i am very happy to uh, see, share this message to all of you here so we are ready to invest ready to respect green management respect to the human being for the success of business for the success of human life so therefore we are we must ready from each from i am a dean of faculty of management i respect to when i decide i respect to this human being thank you sir thank you thank you thank you it's more time from the audience do you have any question raise your hand please audience question please thank you i don't have question in my opinion the main policy of intellectual being like us should be done to wait for formal policy like when will the formal policy related to green technology will be implemented then we will follow that let's remember the quotation of a famous person my pocket my first dustbin we if we follow this quotation in our life if we implemented this quotation in our life then the world will be green which we are discussing today we should follow in our life not like a uh, formal policy will become and we will follow that only that for thank you and the talk about from the beginning of awareness to the budgeting policy implementations and some other environmental issue so finally i would like to draw one question again the way where we are running where we are moving is not the right way there is no exit point so we have to come back there we are going in the way there is no exit come back from the beginning and start good things and try to find the way where we can exit from there to other other place it is very very important our society i am not blaming all but society the currently is not in the right way either if you talk government if you talk about the academician if you talk about the uh, businessman if you talk about the others we are not in the right track i am afraid after 20 years what happened in this world if we practice the same thing what we are doing if we do not correct it what happened in future this is a big question to all so that finally thank you our five panelists so i would like to request all of you to clap them i read the name uh, professor dr thomas kolar please clap him please clap him i am professor dr much pore clap him please and professor dr anjani kumar mishra professor dr uh, arun kumar mishra and associate professor shen liu dr shen shen liu for their great contribution and from my side if there is some and also i would like to give thank to our dean of poharans management dr daraj thakal for his straight forward comments about the solution so i want to thank all media 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 friend our principal who has given us umbrella to do this and i would like to thank him and all participant from indonesia and all from other countries and national national participants you are great shingal is nothing if we do not work like this we will be and succeed by saying this thank you thank you thank you and we have the two parallels and down stair please follow the instruction and go down thank you and clap all thank you <laughs> now the last keynote uh, professor thomas he will present here then we'll go and please don't move if you are inside please come come out fast key note speed please be seated here and try to get more knowledge
from him thank you be seated please be seated if you want to go some outside but be seated we have a very important keynotes Thirty minutes, fifteen minutes. We can talk. You can ask questions. And Sorry. as I have been introduced before, I think I will just continue with the keynote. Um, and the topic, as it's written in the program, is talent management in education. I have prepared a presentation, and you may follow the presentation. Um, hopefully, it's large enough to read it as well. I'm not sure. So the topic has been chosen uh, in order to reflect uh, what is the intersection of uh, managing the development of talents, what is one of the major tasks of a higher education institute, um, and as well to understand what is recent challenges at the intersection to the vocational training and the uh, workplace in the green industry. And let me first start with a little structure. I will develop the presentation in four steps. I will start with uh, some more words about my background in uh, Germany at the TU Dresden, University of Technology in Dresden, which is uh, a research and an education hub uh, in the context of engineering education and as well provides fine opportunities for transferring the findings into society's needs, different industries. Then in a second step, I will uh, talk about the transitions of the workplace and the meaning for green skills in the context of global corporations. Um, before I then will come to some conclusions, the conclusions you mainly find in the program book, in the abstract book, that it has been uh, printed and you may follow it uh, by reading it through. And finally, we may have remaining 10, 15 minutes for discussion. The keynote is altogether planned for 45 minutes, so it's about 30 minutes that I will speak, and then we have 10, 15 minutes for discussion. Let me come to the first. Uh, thank you. Perfect. Yes, let me come to the first um, section. So, what about the background uh, in? Uh, research and education at the German Higher Education Institute, Dresden University of Technology. You can use your smartphone and you can scan the QR code and then you will be sent to the uh, website directly in, in case you wish further inquiry. So TU Dresden is one of the larger German universities of technology. We are uh, top three when it comes to research and as for transfer, it's Germany's strongest university when it comes to the number of patents in recent years. So we are having by far the most patents. Um, it's a full university, even though it's labeled University of Technology, meaning that we have a strong commitment to engineering education and have various uh, domains of engineering. I myself, I'm a professor for education technology. Again, it's linked to engineering, but engineering of education, of course. At the TU Dresden, we have approximately 30,000 students, another 10% in a private branch, and out of those 30,000, we have about 20%, 19, 20% uh, from international backgrounds. A large group of the students is PhD students, so approximately 5,000 study uh, toward a PhD. Of course, we have a, a number of bachelor and master programs as well. And in Dresden, as it is a full university, there is uh, several branches besides the engineering. We have humanities and social sciences, what is a special condition to combine the engineering with the other domains. And we have as well, for example, a medical faculty and train medical doctors. So it's by range the full university. Um, when it comes to the context of vocational education, I need to say a few words more. In Germany, we have a so-called dual system. That means that the workforce is, um, or majority of the workforce in Germany has, uh, well, completed a vocational education and not a higher education. So the German industry's backbone is mainly the vocational training. The vocational training takes place following the dual character, 50% uh, in the vocational school, 50% uh, in the uh, at the workplace uh, in a certain company. So the education, this education usually lasts uh, two and a half to three and a half years and it's a 
uh, education that follows after 10 years of uh, general education. Some of those vocational um, graduates go to university or University of Applied Science, but not that many. At the TU Dresden, we are educating the teachers for the vocational schools. We have a large institute where we, there we have about uh, 10 or 11 different chairs uh, that are split half and half into vocational subjects, um, special didactics for the vocational subjects, for the, uh, met, uh, for the um, metal and electro industries, for automotive industries, for construction industries, for social sector, and as well for medical professions. And the other hand, we have some more overarching chairs uh, for theory, for method, for technology of education um, and adult education. By this uh, specter, we are by now the largest such institute in Germany, having the most profiled uh, vocational teacher training program. And what is uh, special here is the combination of analytical projects or basic research activities uh, with the transfer into different industries. Meaning that we, even though we are inside the university and we are in research and higher education, we always have an eye on the needs of the labor market and of different industries. That's the second background. The next one is my personal uh, chair. I'm a professor for educational technology, um, being quite a lot involved in international programs with the dear colleagues of the University of Jakarta, for example, but as well with other partners uh, in other European and Asian countries mainly. And um, at this, um, in this context, um, the focus is on how new technologies can be used as didactic instruments, so how we may employ digital infrastructures, digital uh, resources, um, and how we profile it in order to provide the most um, eff effective, uh, the most appropriate uh, learning outcome. Um, as mentioned before, I was introduced as a director of a research center, and the research center, the uh, CODIP, is the central uh, research unit of the university. There we have, uh, with about 70 people, research projects where we try to implement innovations into very different institutions, even in a larger society. And uh, the idea is that if, if there's a new technology, it is not just because it's a new technology uh, functional. No, it needs to be adopted uh, by the people, by the institutions, and it will change for sure the production process independently if this takes place in education or in any other industry. So if we use uh, digital infrastructures for collaboration and if we use digital infrastructures for producing whatever product, then the workflow the routines, the production process change on the one hand. On the other hand, it's as well the skills of the people that need to be, uh, that need to adopt to this uh, new patterns. Um, and uh, so the idea of the research is um, to provide um, measures that uh, deal with the technology, with the skill development or the competence development, the qualification, and as well with the uh, well, organizational structure and the production process. This together is, uh, well, enabled under the roof of this um, innovation center for digital innovation and participation. We as well uh, try to, um, well, implement the uh, measures uh, we have, uh, we, we are dealing with in the context of vocational education, higher education and uh, engineering education. Uh, into commercial context uh, without a sustainable uh, persistence after uh, usually grant-based projects have been completed. And here we have a structure that we call the Theo Dresden Institute for Further and Continuous Education. Uh, at this institute uh, we provide training programs. Um, at the end of my uh, keynote I will have a brief um, well, description as well of some of the recent measures with Asian partners uh, in India and other countries. So the research is going to be um, published in uh, 
profiled uh, readings as well. And um, indeed, um, there is um, just um, on an annual basis uh, new publications um, as a result of different conferences occurring. For example, and I just have this slide here to see what is the focus. So one, on the one hand, uh, there's the focus on the vocational education, so how this type of education is going to be implemented, especially with Asian partners. Um, and on the other hand, uh, we have uh, as well a focus on community development. So communities as social uh, entities, as organizational structures um, that arise around uh, specific topics. Uh, for us, the topic is not so much interesting. We are focusing on the method of uh, developing communities uh, in very different branches for very different uh, purposes. And this helps as well to uh, support the smart development and uh, the innovation development in, for example, different regional uh, contexts, including um, as well focus on different industries like the green technology industries. All those publications uh, we are producing are open access, meaning that uh, it should be as well accessible for the um, researchers uh, and practitioners uh, beyond our institute and as well when it uh, is uh, possible, we uh, provide it in the format of an open educational resource so that the teaching staff may adapt it easily and work with those resources for uh, its own purpose as well, those who may not have been uh, involved directly in the activity. So open access and open educational resources are core principles for our um, idea of providing a participative participative uh, uh, entrance to the um, research. So now let me come to the uh, closer to the topic, the future of work. Well, when we see um, our, well, 21st century uh, or even the end of the second half and the end of the 20th century, uh, all of us would probably confirm that there is, that there are transformations going on transformations that are, uh, could be labeled as digital transformation as a very strong trigger, the new technologies um, of digital nature, but as well the question of the green technologies and the green skills, and on the other hand as well, or on the third hand so to say, it's the globalization that's a very strong momentum as well. And I like to focus on some, or like to highlight some of the most uh, in my opinion, most relevant uh, changes uh, that affect uh, the future of the workplace. So, first of all, um, the uh, digitalization of the products uh, in many industries, or I would say to some extent as well in all industries, uh, leads to the production of data. So, it's not only the physical product that we are producing, no, it's as well the data that goes alongside with those products. And uh, this uh, creates new type of products that we would call, that we would label intangible products. So we cannot touch it because it's non-physical products and those are uh, available in all sectors. If it is tourism, if it is construction industry, if it is um, research, uh, if it is uh, some other uh, industries. Um, so we have that uh, then the, the development that those intangible products can be manufactured and can be processed and can be as well consumed uh, independently of a certain location. So worldwide, globally, one may uh, work with those intangible products um, ad hoc and synchronously um, at any location uh, worldwide. However, what is perhaps a quite late development is that we have started to adopt supporting systems. Uh, with the arrival of the AI, we can see that those supporting systems uh, may become somehow, it's not databases anymore, it's somehow personal assistants or companions that have started to support us in almost any activity. So most of us know something like Siri or Alexa. Some others may have started to work with ChatGPT and similar technologies for running the everyday routines. That's a big challenge on the one hand. On the other hand, it's as well a huge opportunity for uh, re, well, 
or coining the uh, many branches anew. I will later on come to the uh, question of skills. Uh, what it means to the uh, workplace or to the physical structure is uh, that, we, um, that we have started to, um, well, produce things together with the uh, customers. What we know already in education since a long time that a person who is coming to study at a university or a, a trainee who is going to vocational school is part of the process, now becomes as well uh, somehow obvious for any other product. So it does not work out just to sell something, uh, to produce a product and then to hand it over to a certain uh, group of users. No, th those, those uh, customers, those users or clients need to be part of the production already in the beginning. So when I'm, let's say, uh, booking a journey, uh, then I'm using an online portal that th comes from wherever place and of course I'm providing my data myself so it's not done by a service agency it's we are part of the production process if we are uh, having uh, and there, there are many similar examples I don't want to waste time here um, of course uh, we have uh, still some issue about using those data and uh, the, the question of how cooperation or co-production may work out in a um, most appropriate way when it comes to the education sector. Here I can see that uh, we do not make use of the data that is going produced uh, by our students or in, in co-production with the students and uh, trainees. We are just um, widely dismissing those data and uh, still focusing on very classic media and uh, learning um, outputs. So I guess here is uh, a strong demand uh, for having a new understanding or renewed understanding of the meaning of uh, those production processes in the education sector. One uh, important question is uh, how do we equip the production sites? So is it really the site that is such a building or does education for example take place rather uh, independently of, of uh, classic infrastructures? Most of us did learn a lot during the time of the pandemic. COVID-19 did show that education may rather take place at home of course, it will somehow convert the experience, but still this is an example for that uh, production that is not always uh, bound anymore to, um, to physical structures of the 18th or 19th century or early 20th century. So here we have a shift and this uh, would lead us even more into what some call the metaverse, the digital infrastructure that could be shared by anyone who is interested and as well any institution who likes to present itself there. Um, however, what remains uh, unanswered or not completely answered is who is responsible for the designing such spaces of uh, sharing, of collaboration? Well, usually it's the individual user, so we hand over some of the responsibility to the um, consumers. Uh, and to the markets and it's not so much the industry anymore or the education sector that is providing those infrastructures. Look at your university and see how, uh, what infrastructures are used by your students or if they use their own individual smartphones or laptops or whatsoever for studying or if you hand over some infrastructure to them. I think it's obvious uh, that this is a sharing of responsibility that already took place. I will um, jump over to the next uh, in order not to uh, spend too much time here. The next moment of the transforming uh, transformation is the transforming of skills. So the skills uh, are indeed a very critical uh, aspect and uh, some of our colleagues have started to discuss what are future skills or so-called 21st century skills and what we can see is that there is a, a large moment of digitality, uh, digital skills uh, at the forefront. Um, however, we have not yet uh, clearly defined to what extent this is a, a core element of the different uh, study programs with the big data and the data uh, professionalism and now with the next wave of the AI we see even more that new type of skills are needed in order to deal with those skills. 
we have new jobs, new, new, new profiles of uh, jobs that are going beyond the uh, recent um, duties. Uh, we can see that data professionals or as well um, professionals uh, in, in many branches um, would be searched uh, with additional skills. If one studies job advertisements, then we can see that the industry is looking for a new type of skills. And as mentioned in the discussion we had during the panel here, uh, of course, um, many industries uh, already report that at this point in time, it may be different in 10 years, but at this point in time, there's a shortage of uh, skilled workforce uh, in relation to the new skills uh, needed. However, on the other hand, we can already now ask, well, do, really, do we really need humans uh, who would provide those skills or maybe hand over even more of the activities needed uh, to machines like computers or similar infrastructure? So can we automate, uh, can we cooperate uh, with those digital infrastructures? Um, this is one question. And another question would be, well, what about the education staff? So us as teachers, as professionals, uh, do we, do we indeed, can we be sure to continue what we are doing uh, since uh, generations um, or isn't it uh, up to us as well to consider how the change in the uh, education sector does look like. So we can observe that newer programs uh, do reflect that there is uh, additional or different types of pedagogical activity like mentoring, like tutoring, but not only the classic way of teaching anymore. And of course, part of that is handed over to the technical infrastructure. So um, especially with the AI, but already before with the video-based lecturing and with some other formats of media character, we could uh, observe that uh, the way of how education is implemented uh, is as well uh, shifting the roles of the education staff. And to some extent we, conserve, may, we may observe as well that other uh, independent uh, people may, be, may become players in that game. They provide their uh, and share their insight uh, via open platforms like YouTube or like other like uh, learning management systems and blogs. And even though they are not employed as uh, teaching staff, they would do a great job and uh, most of the students, uh, even most of us seniors, have uh, can can report examples of uh, those uh, infrastructures uh, in a rather independent uh, way without having asked the education institute to and without having received a recommendation of those institutes. So we are as well. Well, um, I would say quite a lot challenged uh, in the education sector, sector um, in our professional pedagogical roles, uh, providing a fine and uh, up-to-date um, well, environment for let our trainees transform their skills. Um, perhaps here I have some example. So in one of our uh, development um, and research uh, activities, we have started to um, assist or to, to implement technological tools that provide the um, education staff and the research staff with, um, well, supporting companions in order to let them process uh, large amounts of text-based data um, in order to provide up-to-date quality. And uh, this is not only an implement implementation or an intervention in terms of uh, processing data, it's as well an intervention in terms of training skills of those data professionals. So it's, I think for some time uh, ahead we may uh, expect that uh, we are not only practicing new practices, but the same way we are as well um, detecting new practices and learning or acquiring new skills. This is something that uh, we could reflect upon even more. Perhaps we may have an eye on that during the upcoming discussion. Uh, let me come to a third aspect uh, that relates as well to the green industries. So when having been uh, arriving here to, to Nepal, it's my first time, and I was surprised that there was an electric vehicle coming, picking us up. 
and uh, we, we drove quite some time uh, during the night and always there was charging stations. So electrical infrastructure or the infrastructure for in the context of green technology has arrived on the one hand. On the other hand, the question remains, well, where does the uh, workforce come from that is able to maintain or to reproduce the, those infrastructures? Those who have been trained before would not bring in the skills needed for running those uh, technologies. Some, of course, some skill is transferable, but not every skill. And uh, here we see that uh, especially the smaller companies have a big challenge or face a big challenge. Uh, they would not have an own training department. They would not have the capacity traveling around uh, and, 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 and sending uh, staff for training. And even the management would not be uh, um, well, able to deal with uh, patterns of uh, requalification. Um, indeed, uh, we can see that um, global collaborations or inter firm collaborations, business to business collaborations have started. Some of the umbrella of such meta networks and uh, cluster structures, some uh, combining other actors. And those, uh, com uh, those collaborations usually are effective even uh, across borders uh, in a global domain. Uh, however, the uh, management staff in, the, uh, in, 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 in many of the uh, enterprises uh, does not have the um, understanding of the, well, the, the conceptual nature or the conceptual background of such collaborations. They have an eye on the specific product, but they would miss the point of how those um, well, collaboration structures uh, by when implementing virtual patterns of virtual collaboration uh, do work most effectively and what obstacles um, and what challenges uh, may be seen as most um, relevant. This must be trained, uh, so um, we need to provide um, suitable um, well, schemes for the management workforce that goes beyond the technology, but especially when it comes to grid-based technologies. And the green technology uh, often may be considered as a grid-based technology um, must combine the experience uh, from different industries and different independent enterprises in an um, effective way. This must be uh, trained, and of course this may start already during the education uh, period, but may continue as well afterwards for those who already in industry. Um, now let me move on. Um, so if just to highlight uh, two or three uh, concepts of uh, such training, then we may talk about co-working uh, in virtual collaborative teams. This is some component this may employ as well practitioners from different industries. We may talk about hybrid work and learning environments. Uh, and uh, we see some task in shaping those in the context not only of a local, but as well in context of a global cooperation. And uh, as said before, we may have a changing roles of the um, well workers there or of, of, uh, at the intersection between uh, production and consumption. So we may have new roles like consumers and co-producers. Um, and uh, we may see then that those platforms are partly implemented and we can see that many industries somehow make use of those infrastructures and uh, with the good support they may be able to develop into such a um, future. The clear differentiation, this is the conclusion here, the clear differentiation be between a customer or client and a producer or service provider does somehow disappear. So we have mixed scenarios more and more and uh, the classic principle of shopping a ready-made product is perhaps not the complete future. Um, now, let me just uh, almost at the end of my presentation uh, mention some of the examples, uh, some of the uh, measures we are providing uh, in cooperation with Asian partners. So, uh, for example, with our colleagues from uh, the um, Indonesian um, General Directorate for Higher Education. We have implemented measures for upskilling um, teaching staff in the um, 
universities of applied sciences mainly in order to create exposure to uh, training, um, training principles uh, and production principles in industries in, in Europe and Germany uh, with colleagues from uh, Vietnam, China and as well uh, India. We just implemented a uh, special uh, diploma course for future-oriented academic uh, curricula in, in teacher education and uh, for some true partner in order to provide, uh, well, not only future skills, but as well to develop personality in the light of taking over responsibility and uh, becoming a somehow futurist uh, junior, um, well, person. This all relates to the uh, technical vocation, uh, well, approach that we have uh, in the profile in the German uh, speaking countries where we combine practical exposure to, to work with theoretical conceptual uh, training and learning that takes place in classic education institute. So if you like to um, continue with some conclusions about the green tech talent management, I would say first of all we need curriculum development. What I have learned from talking to some of the colleagues here um, at the um, University is uh, that this is already underway. Uh, however, we would as well need to see if we have enough specialized instructors. And why not find colleagues from industry who could support us? Because they have experience from the industries that already, um, well, applying those green techs. Um, then it's as well a question what might be the resources? I mean, if we talk about green technology resources uh, as teaching labs, it might be very expensive. Uh, so we may hand over this responsibility again to industry by incorporating practical experience or, or applied learning uh, places uh, within internships with those instructors from industry and then this perhaps uh, would be a hand-in-hand -hand fair distribution of the uh, efforts. So industry partnerships are somehow a core for uh, being uh, innovative and uh, providing up-to-date experience uh, for our learners that is as well related uh, to the labor market. And of course, um, it's not only the technical skills that are needed that coming from engineering. I think what I've presented today that as well, um, well in includes some evidence that uh, there are soft skills needed. Soft skills in collaboration, in communication, in organization development, in management. Uh, in order to um, implement uh, new technologies, especially grid technologies, in a good way. And finally, let me just uh, uh, reach out to that. Um, so technology, um, and especially when it uh, comes to taking over the experience and the, the competency, the ownership for the running the uh, green technologies, then this must reach out to the wider society. So it's not uh, appropriate if only some high-level qualified male specialists would be uh, the ones who are taking over responsibility. It's the whole society and if it concerns the private household or if it concerns the whatever the traders on the market then of course uh, many others uh, need to be involved. So we as higher education and research institutes should as well understand and, and research um, and understand how ownership for the green technology may be implemented in the wider society. That's a big challenge, but it's as well a fine opportunity for having a very um, much needed uh, development supported by our, um, by our skills. Um, so what I like to suggest is that we as education institutes should uh, collaborate in the light of uh, innovating the, the green tech talent development uh, with other stakeholders, of course uh, from the uh, governmental agency but as well with the industry partners as good as possible and provide stable patterns of inter-stakeholder collaborations, eventually even uh, across uh, national borders but first of all uh, on a local and national basis. I thank you for your attention. If you like to continue the uh, discussion, then we are running conferences as well. We have conferences uh, that we collaborate with in Asia, colleagues in Indonesia, 
and but as well conferences uh, that are traveling around the globe on engineering education and on community development. All of those are usually Scopus indexed and as well suitable for having good quality publications. Thank you for your attention and now we have some minutes for discussion, I guess. For your great keynotes, uh, it's a time for discussion, not from here, it's from there. So I'd like to uh, request our audience to raise your hands. Yeah, to, uh, please go there. For very insightful presentation on digital technology. Uh, Students and teachers are used to use the virtual and digital platform. But the countries like Nepal, we are familiar with the digital platform after COVID. So that how we can make familiar with the people living in the developing countries? This is one query. And another is, what are the shortcomings? What are the weaknesses of the virtual and digital learnings. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your uh, question. I'd like to comment briefly. So what I can observe is that in the so-called developed countries uh, or the, yeah, the, the, those countries, uh, there is not always a, a wide openness for uh, adopting uh, new skills or for as well um, being uh, in being involved in, in uh, being, being part of a uh, changing economy. Uh, so this creates quite some uncertainty for those who feel that they would have had everything. And uh, sometimes uh, I can see that the openness uh, in uh, economies which are not uh, as wealthy is more open and as wealthy the way of development or the speed of development might be much larger. Um, and uh, though, especially in the Nepalese society, I think there's a good potential for uh, making um, a good step ahead uh, in um, implementing new measures. Two, three generations later, this may be different, seeing this from a macro perspective. But uh, at the current uh, point in time, there's a good potential um, and as per society is perhaps more open and ready for taking into account uh, new measures. So when the infrastructure or a new infrastructure comes and it is already a next generation infrastructure, green infrastructure, then of course this is a fine development. A, a country that has already invested 20 years ago may, may remain on, an, on a, a more outdated stage for the next generation. So I think it's, it's interesting to combine, and your question leads us to, to um, well, uh, investigating the meaning of different uh, conditions or different uh, starting points. And I thank you for that, because this helps a lot to explore in more depth uh, how the journey could look like. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your very wonderful presentation. I have a very simple question. You seem to have argued that digital skills and future skills are synonymous. Well, do you think the future skills should be limited to digital skills or they have broader areas um, to consider? What's your view on it? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for... So it's not, it's not limited, uh, future skills are not limited to digital skills. Digital skills is important, but only one component. Future skills as well relate to entrepreneurial uh, and uh, uh, aspects uh, to, to responsibility and as well, of course, to uh, a, a reflection of uh, green skills. Um, so this is a wider concept and I did just have a, a focus on one component to some extent. So thank you for correcting here. Wonderful presentation. Earlier, we used to develop technology, how to make a human to work like machine. Right now, we have started making machine to work like a human. So when you are making machine to work like a human, then what will be the job of a human? And do you think any danger from those machines who are going to work like human on humanitarian ground? Yes, the consideration that, uh, well, can we, or to the question, if we can already 
understand what will be the typical uh, pattern of such an innovation journey. And uh, what we know from the adoption of previous technologies like telecommunication, the internet, or mo mobility, individual mobility by, by uh, automotive uh, vehicles and so on, uh, is that there is, in the beginning, there is a phase of exploration which is, however, uh, driven by the uh, understanding or by taking over the interpretation of um, using certain technologies from previous generations um, of technology. Only after this phase of um, trying out for very different purposes, this may lead then to a new, really different, uh, uh, well, culture of uh, usage. And this is something that perhaps may come on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, it's not to be the, 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 the large-scale technologies uh, cannot be understood fully by just taking the individual as a user. No, it's indeed it's a group. It's 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 even a uh, the whole society that implements. Consider the internet that has been um, so grid technologies. The internet has been uh, adopted within one generation by I think 50 percent of uh, uh, all humans, several billion. The green technologies, if we include all those, uh, may come to the same scale. The question is uh, if, if society is ready to adapt. And then if we, if we have a closer look to that, we will see that some, there is as well some, some trends or some strategies to reject it. So we can see societies, people, institutes or, or companies that uh, use it. In, in very intensely or adopted uh, in a high speed. They are quite early in adopting it and some others they try to avoid as much as possible. Um, and it's very interesting to keep an eye on both groups and to see what is the potential but as well what might be well uh, hurdles or uh, challenges to be dealt with. And it's not for sure that every technology that is possible will be adopted by as humans. We can, if you go into history of technology, and not 200 years back, but just in the, in the last generation, you can see very many examples of technologies that have not made it to a wide usage, even though they are quite um, suitable and excellent in engineering, uh, but people decided not to like it. And it's not only because competitors with a similar technology tried to, uh, well, suppress it, but it's as well because uh, people were not ready to question their culture of uh, doing things. So, thank you. Thank you, Professor Thomas Kola. And uh, I have the last questions, and very shortly, briefly, because we are going to time out. Yes. For your very nice and clear presentation, Dr. Thomas. So there are the two terms, green and technology. The technology is a combination of technique and logic, yes. in my opinion. Technique and logic, both are combination of skill, knowledge, ideas, and machine. When we are talking of the talent management, talent management is the management of the knowledge. Once we are going to combine the technology with the ma I mean, knowledge, then only we can do anything in the modern era. Therefore, do you think peace and silence and psychological effect is there necessary for the technology and talent management? This is my sociological, technological, as well as the managerial questions. Thank you very much. I can add that, especially in a phase of uh, transforming uh, technologies, uh, as we are in now in concerning the green technologies and digital technologies, uh, there might be a, or there is obviously a extraordinary uh, need of uh, talents uh, and of upskilling in the industries. And uh, this is uh, perhaps another opportunity for the education institutes to serve the industry, not only with fresh young graduates, but as well with providing programs for the older ones who are already part of the workforce or part of the management, but would, would love to or would have to as well deal with those, uh, well, new tel uh, new approaches but would need to understand it better and then they could uh, perhaps employ the uh, fine 
well experience uh, of a research institute, higher education institute like yours. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Once, please give a big hand to our professor for his big presentation. Yes, thank you very much. And our first, this keynote speak has been completed. And I would like to request to go down for the, we have two parallel sessions, two parallel sessions. One is led by uh, Associate Professor Dr. Dairaj Dhakal, sir. Another will be led by Professor Dr. Anjan Kumar Mishra. So, <coughs> Anjan Kumar Mishra, sorry. Uh, in the first session, there are uh, Mayanath Gimire, uh, presenter, uh, Siman Choudhury, I think, Sarat Chandra Kaple, Priyo ID, Mon Mohammed Trio No, and others. So please, Prem Sir, support him to lead, lead this session. Prem Sir, you can support to Daira Sir, yes, management. And the next session is, uh, next panel session is about uh, Asmita Dahal Chhatri, Puja Tamang, and Arun Jarmawati and Haimin Kaya uh, Gunjakumar Shap. Uh, so please go down for the two panel sessions. And if you need any confusion, you can uh, meet Sarat Chandra Kafle sir, Prem sir, some other exponent. I am also I will I will be also there to support your presentation. Thank you. Welcome to all presenters, favorite presenter and all audience. Uh, we are very excited uh, and we allocate your time. Each paper presenter allocate your time 10 minutes and 5 minutes maximum for question answer session. And then we will conclude the each paper. So I hope uh, Subhasad you also listen to my opinion, my rules and regulations for your paper presentation. So at first we welcome to the online paper presentator. Subhasar, please. You are most welcome. Please note that you have only 10 minutes for your paper presentation and remaining time maximum 5 minutes for your question and answer session. Thank you. So we start Subhasar. Challenges uh, that the of the lifestyle 
So, uh, if my method, methodological framework uh, like this, uh, that's when we need to up. Uh, so, for the data collection part, uh, the sample sizes regarding the uh, way of the uh, collecting primary data and secondary data has been depicted with the close up here. Uh, this is the methodological data analysis part. Uh, this very important slide for the data has been analyzed using the uh, state test control. So, there is also the part of the input in file. How can you manage your data analysis part? Okay, if if government has to send children, uh, they make law and stop property handover to the generation or to the children. Uh, after that, the property handover handover goes to the government. Government will send them and children also can claim can force for the parent property. Thank you, sir. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, you will have uh, in your presentation on very serious issues which is all of us and some of your country as well. So I am very much impressed with your work and in the end uh, we do not find such opportunity like you very senior people do some research and present very real and get this process. So it is impressive. Just uh, uh, like your questionnaire because sometimes uh, depending on the questionnaire or questions like during your social survey what you use the questions maybe the finding may sometimes have what you have uh, put there and also another you know, just question like uh, what the recommendation you made yeah. maybe for its implementation yeah. if you could make the make the recommendation Add some like at the family aspect, family level, maybe at the municipality level, or at the provincial or national level, then that would be, I mean, from implementation point of view, that would be more, uh, uh, I mean, better. better. Okay, thank you, sir. No, that is the Paliga municipality and government municipality, then it is related to the central government. In your presentation, you have said that what might have caused the female to be happy. Next, you have said this research is based on conflict theory. Where, what and why have applied those conflict theory? And uh, regarding this property transfer, we have wheel options also. By making the wheel also, we can transfer our property. And you are responsible only 50% of your property. Rest 50% you might have to transfer to your younger ancestors as of Nepalese law. So if these things should be followed, then there is no problem due to only property transfer that people should migrate inside the, uh, this old age home. So do you have any justification for that? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We have to tie law which is made by government, institutional law. Uh, that is the uh, to fight with the parents uh, to claim the property. And next one is social uh, uh, law. Why socially neighbor people uh, say allows to the elder people, please 50% give to the parent children and 50% you use. Is the same as, as you. Our, uh, in my thing, I have uh, raised the issue in the intellectual uh, forum. It will be slowly expand. Uh, in the last, uh, a lots of people will claim about this. And I agree your uh, suggestion. Thank you, sir.
99.62% uh, is micro, micro enterprises, but one, only 0.01% uh, is profile of uh, MSMA. Population of the micro small enterprises, we, uh, they have 60.5%. Uh, yeah. Are you listening? Okay, so third terminology, uh, green residential building design, design, right? So you are studying about the design of resource building in connection with awareness level and cost effectiveness. Am I right? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm not giving the uh, question <coughs> but uh, could you please uh, repeat once again, sir? So, I, I still I'm not asking question to you. I just inform you, you have three important terminology in your research. Awareness, cost effectiveness, and building design, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah. My question is, how you how you measure the awareness level of those who are designing the building? How you measure the awareness? Uh, well, I'm, I'm really struggling with this question. So, so uh, I'll, 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 I'll request, uh, if, you, if you please, your question to the, uh, to the chat box of the MSP. Okay, okay, I'll I, I repeat uh, next one time. I'll repeat next one time. Building. If you go for construction at that time, definitely cost is very important. 